Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to explain what differential equations are telling us. And I'm going to go through Euler's method and to do that we're going to have to do something called slope fields and isoclines. Seems like a lot of information and perhaps it is, but let's give it a shot. So what is a differential equation telling us anyway? Now, don't try to solve it, just think about it. What is it telling, it? What, what is it telling you? And, well, if you have a differential on one side of the equation, then it's telling you the slope is in it. You put a value of x and a value of y, and you're going to be getting the gradient or the slope. For example, here, if I substitute for a value of x and y, I can get different values of slopes. And I can build a table with this. Right? First of all, think about it. If x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, then I get 1. And for at point zero zero, the slope would be 1. And here's the table that I could build for all different values of x and different values of y. I'm just substituting in here. And I'm getting all these different slopes, right? When x is minus 1 and y is 1, the slope is 1. When x is minus 1 but y is 0, the slope is 2. And this makes sense, right? It's going to be all the time that way. That's really just what this equation here is telling me, isn't it? So what do I do with that? I can actually do the following graph. Now, this graph, what I'm doing here, and I did it with this with a program, uh, so there are actually many more points where the slope is represented. But for example, the minus 1, 1, we said that the slope would be 1, and here you have a line with slope 1. Uh, let's find a point where it's 0. At 0, 1, the slope is 0. And indeed, at 0, 1, we get to see that the slope is 0. And you get to see that in all these points here, approximately. It's not very exact, because as I said, I used a different program for this, and perhaps it's not exactly uh, what you were hoping. But you see at minus 2, minus 2, the slope is 7. And as I go up, the slope gets slightly flatter. So uh, what am I going to be able to do with this? Is I'm going to be able to draw a few lines using this slope field idea. Um, this slope field uh, might be something that you get asked to do. You might have to do it in your, your exam to actually draw one. So it's a good thing to practice a few of them. Most of the time, the, the exam will be very specific on for what points, one value apart from minus two to two, etc. Uh, but we'll look at different uh, ways in which they might ask you to do this. Perhaps they give you one, the one you interpret it. And if you do that, um, uh, if they ask you that, you might have to draw the lines, which you're going to see in a bit. So how do we draw these lines? How do we use the slope field? Well, here is my equation again. And here's the slope field. I just took a bit of a bigger thing. So how do I draw, how do I draw a line through here? Right? How do, how do I draw a line that behaves at spot? If you just choose a point, any, any point, and you take it from there, you can kind of follow the slopes a little bit, right? So it's like I'm going to do that with the, with the mouse right now. I start here, suppose. Well, I know that I'm going up because that's what the slope is telling me. So just go up. And then here at some point, I'm going to start going kind of a bit more flatter. And maybe here I'm going to meet this line. And here I have a point. You see I have a maximum here. The slope is zero. And then I go start going down. And I go down. And I go down faster and faster. And then again, it reaches to zero. And then it goes up. And it goes up. And the slope goes up. And the slope goes up. See how I can follow it. So that's one solution of differential equations. In this case, I started here, but I could have started here, and that would be a different curve. Or perhaps even starting up here. Why not? There are going to be all sorts of different solutions to the differential equation. Why would that be? It would be because the actual solution for this differential equation is this expression. And the reason why you have different curves is because they have different values of c. And that's why we get different curves there. Right? Maybe I have a different curve when c is equal to 0, or when c is equal to 5, or when c is equal to minus 80. All of them are going to give me different curves. Let's draw a few of them. Here's one. And see how it respects the slope at each time. It respects my slope field, right? Here's another one. Again, it also respects the slope field. It's kind of similar to the one I drew earlier on. And here's another one. And here's another one. All of these lines are respecting my slope field. And all of these lines are particular solutions to the differential equation. They're just a function drawn with a different given value of c. That's all it is. Now, 
And you might get asked to draw a few of these, also in interpret whether they are solutions to the differential equation or not, based on simply on the fact of whether are they are following the slope field or not. Now, the important thing to do, the important thing that you must understand is these lines never cross. In no situation, the different solutions of the differential equation will have an intersection point. Now, it looks like they're converging here, they're getting closer, but at no point will they actually cross. That's something you should know. And you might be able to think why, because uh, I'm just changing the value here, so in a way I'm just displacing it. So in a way they're kind of parallel, if you want to think of it that way. Um, but in reality, uh, you're not going to really get asked why. You, what you need to know is that the fact that they never cross, and if you draw them, make sure they don't cross. Uh, drawing this is not that straightforward. And you might have already realized that, so you're here and you go up, and you're not really sure what point you have to kind of get to the other side. It's not that easy, and perhaps you feel like I need a ruler or three rulers and then like a pencil and like five like different pens to like figure out how this line goes, and that's not straightforward. So this, here's a little technique that might make it a bit easier. And it's something that you need to know what it is. Isoclines. Now, uh, if you think about my slope field, uh, let me go through this and I expect in a minute. Here's my slope field. Now I can draw a line, this line here, is drawn where all of the points where the slope is zero are. You see, I can join all these dots and I get a parabola. I can join all the points where the slope is minus one and I get another parabola. I can join all the points where the slope is minus two and I get a parabola. All the points where the slope is one, I get this parabola. These are curves that are not solutions to the differential equation. They're curves that are just where the slope is exactly one value. How did I figure them out? Well, I had my differential equation. Our differential equation said that dy over dx is equal to x squared minus y plus 1. And I'm trying to find out when uh, is the differential equation going to give me a slope of 0. So I just put a 0 where the gradient is. And then I draw that function. See, I just have to take the y over to the other side. And I get this beautiful quadratic that I'm very familiar with, which is the one in red here. And I draw that. Now, what that's going to mean is that the function, when it crosses this line, is when you have to be flat. You have to be with a maximum or a minimum, because that's when the slope is zero. And here, the slope must be one. And here, the slope must be minus one, no matter what. That's what's going to happen here. And all of these lines respect that. See this line here? The slope is zero. This line here, the slope is zero. This line here, the slope is zero. This line here, the slope is one. And here again, the slope is one. Same for this one. Here the slope is two, one, zero. Over here, sorry, one. And somewhere here, the slope is two. So that's how it works. These lines are isoclines. And um, again, there are many ways in which they might ask you to use this in an exam. But you have to know that the isoclines are just lines that tell you that the solution to the differential equation, all solutions to the differential equation, where they cross with that isocline, they get that slope. And notice, very important, that this line here never crosses the red one. This, this line here just never crosses it. Hence, this line here just never has slope zero. And that's okay. And that's probably going to happen. You shouldn't be alarmed by it, okay? It's perfectly fine. Great. So now for Euler's method. Already nine minutes into the video, but I think you can still hold on to this. So Euler's method is just going to be a way to estimate the values of differential equations. Uh, it's kind of a similar thing that we've been doing, kind of following the slope, right? You kind of say like, okay, here the slope is telling me to go up. So I go up, I go up, I go up until I find another slope uh, field line that tells me to go to the right, and now I go a bit more to the right, and now I get to min maximum. That sort of process that we were doing, it's basically the same thing, but rather than using a drawing, we're just going to be using Right, we're just going to be using the algebra. We're going to use the x's and the y's and the equals and solve it. So if we know a point in the equation, if they tell me like, okay, we know that this is a point, so we have an idea of what a particular solution is. We have a point to start from. We can use this slope around it to estimate the value of the nearby point. So for example, if they tell me that when x equals one, y equals one, maybe I can estimate the function and tell me the function, right? I can estimate further values. I can estimate, hey, so what's going to what's y going to be when x is equal to 2? So how do I do that? 
Well, I can calculate the slope at this point here, because all I have to do is put the values of x and y here, and that's going to give me the slope. I have the slope at these points here, right? I'm going to put that as m0, and I can calculate it, and it gives me 1. So I know that when I'm at this point, the slope is 1. I know that I have a slope field line that's something like this. So what next? Well, what's the next point of y going to be? Suppose that I'm moving 0 0.25 forwards, and I'm going from 1 to 1.25. Wouldn't that be, well, take the slope, in this case 1, multiply times the increase of x, and add the value y that you had before. You know, it's, it's very similar to using the idea that the slope, the gradient of a function. You see, this is the gradient of a function. If I move this equation around, I can find y1 simply by substituting and solving it out. I can find the next x because that's given to me because I know that I'm moving 0 0.25 to the right. And hence, I just substitute it into this equation and I can find the next value of y. In this case, it's also going to be 1.25. And once I have the value of y, hey, I have the new value of x, 0 0.25 moving to the right. I have a value of y. I can calculate the slope at this point here. Now, the further away I move, the worse my estimation is. But it's going to be a pretty good estimation. You'll see it in a minute. So here's an example. Let's do it using this example. Now, notice how they ask this. They give you a point that you know is going to be in the solution function, okay? And, uh, and they ask you to find the value of x equals 2. And they ask you to use steps of 0 0.25. They already tell you. And of course, they give you the differential equation. So I have to find out what x equals 2 is going to be equal to. Now, I've got to be able to check because I know the solution to this differential equation, which is why I chose it. Um, so let's go ahead. How am I supposed to do this? Well, here's how you do it. First of all, you say, okay, when x equals 1, right, I know that y is equal to 1. That's given to me in the definition of the problem. I calculate the slope, which is just by substituting these values of x and y into my equation. Right? It's not, uh, it's not, it's not correct. It's the 1 squared minus 1 that gives you 0 right away. Sorry about that. Uh, so this loop is going to be 1. Right? And once I have that, well, I go to the next row. I jump to the next row. And in the next row, the first thing I fill up is the x. Now, because the x used to be 1, and I'm going towards 2, and I'm taking steps of 0 0.25, well, from 1, I go to 1.25. Then I'll go to 1.5, 1.75, and then to 2. That's how you advance the axis, okay? Great. So now I'm on 1.25. How do I find the y? Now, to find the y, I'm going to use the formula of the gradient. And I'm just going to clear up what y1 is going to be. It's going to be the gradient times the increase in x, in this case 0 0.25, plus the previous value in y. That's it. And that's going to give me 1.25. So I have my new value of y. And I do the same thing for 1.5, 1 1.75, 1.2, using the gradients that I calculate. And that's going to give me my result. Now, this is my approximated value when x equals to 2. I'm saying that when x equals 2, y is equal to 2.513, given that my first value was this one. And it's not a bad approximation. Let's check out the, the graph. The blue line is the actual graph of the solution to this differential equation going through this point here. And you can see the red dots are my approximations. It's not too bad. It kind of goes with that solution. It's slightly underneath. I'm pretty close. So Euler's method is a good way of estimating the value just by building in this table. Now, keep in mind that a way to make a better approximation is to start from closer. We have a closer point. Or just take smaller steps. And that's what's going to give you a better approximation. And just one more question. Not necessarily harder, but if you have this differential equation, and I can take steps of 0 0.5, and I have this point here, I just do the same thing. Now, the difference with the other one is that the other one I couldn't, I could solve it by using linear differential equations on my integrating factor. This one, different deal. This one's harder. But uh, I can estimate it using Euler's method. Again, I build a table. And these are my equations, the ones that I'm going to use. And 
a discus comes from the differential equation itself, and this one's from the definition of the gradient. And hence, I make my estimations, and I get my solution, 0 0.25. And that's how all this method works. Uh, again, it's a little bit of practice, but it's generally very repetitive. Tricky questions come perhaps with the slope fields and the isoprise. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.